I got absolutely decimated by mosquitoes up there. It's all the talk about money. I don't think they like that. Ugh. But anywho, uh, back to the subject of money. It's finally starting to cool down, cool down here in Japan. It's now September and mid end September. And I think we're finally reaching like the low 30s here in Kyushu at least. And it's killer birds. Anyways, I wanted to talk about the experience of working for a Japanese animation company here in Japan. Um, when I first when I first went to Japan, like for the first time, like six or six or seven years ago now at this point, that was to, to come work for a Japanese animation company focused on doing things for games, commercials, some films, uh, and some like, you know, like uh, personal IP stuff that they, w they had developing. And obviously, can't talk about the Japanese animation industry as a whole in that sense, just because all companies are, they're different. It's, it's hard to paint like, a whole industry with the same brush so to speak but I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best <laughs> uh, both from my experiences and from friends I've had that have worked in other companies as well so right off the bat there's obviously the language barrier that's uh, that's a huge one right so the company that I I emailed a bunch of companies to start off with when I wanted to come down here to start with uh, some of them had some English on their website, some of them had only Japanese, most of them only had Japanese, basically. And at the time, I don't know, I probably spoke like a fraction of Japanese less, like just a little bit less than I do now, it's not like my Japanese is amazing. But, <laughs> so there is that consideration as well. The company that I went down here to work for, Mont Blanc, had one staff who spoke English. And they also had an American guy uh, hired as well, obviously also spoke English. So that already helped. And the person on staff who spoke English was the person in charge of dealing with uh, hirings, recruitment, general, you know, outreach stuff. So that, that, that helped quite a lot. If the company that you're applying for doesn't have that, doesn't have anything to support an English speaker or a non-Japanese speaker, then it's going to be pretty difficult. Unless they're somehow willing to bring you on just for the learning experience, I suppose. But working in animation in Japan versus animation or VFX or commercials in the West, I mean, of course they have similarities, but they're really not the same. It's, there's overtime in the West, of course. Uh, there's crazy deadlines, delivery can be absolutely mental, but one of the things that I felt better about in the West was sort of the ability to say no, you know, like you not wanting to do something like, okay, I'm not going to work seven hours overtime today because, you know, I've already done my eight or nine hours. I found that to be harder in Japan where in the West, for a company, it was like, uh, of course they wanted you to work overtime, which I never did <laughs> because I really didn't want to work overtime. I had flip normals on the side, had other projects that I wanted to do instead, my personal life. I just didn't want to commit everything to only ever being at work. I know some people are doing that even in the West, but here in Japan, I was like, you got this feeling of, that that was totally not okay like like at all um you it feels weird to say but you it, there is this sense of like you kind of get a free pass as a foreigner with many things uh they like expect you oh, you don't know this because you're not japanese i don't worry about that because you're not japanese it doesn't matter uh of course not with all things and some things they don't tell you about but they still judge you for it <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when it comes to the work, 
even there, you know, I feel like there was a uh, the same hours weren't expected of you, but they'd appreciate it. The Japanese colleagues that I had and friends I've talked with about their working hours, whether they're Japanese or foreign or not, I, I think I was very lucky with the company I was working for, but many people aren't. And people end up doing crazy amounts of hours. It's, it becomes their life. And I think a lot of work is like that here. I've worked with people that, uh, you know, I leave the office and maybe I leave the office at seven. I can't remember if you come in at nine or 10 or whatever. And then leave the office for a few hours and you come back at maybe 10 or 11, you've been out, maybe you forgot your bag or something and there's still people working. Now this was particularly noticeable with the juniors like more senior staff they would still work long hours but it would be more in like sprints you know so if there was something coming up a big job or something then they would work crazy hours but for the juniors they seem to just do it all the time and i guess you have that weird sensation of it's not always clear like what are the goals what are the guidelines um and I think even as a Japanese junior, that is still there, and the expectation is definitely there. So this is the downside to living in Fukuoka, where the airport is pretty close to the city. It means that there are planes going over like every two minutes or so. <laughs> anyway, you know you have horror stories of uh, animators, especially animators here in Japan, working through their you know illnesses and sleeping at work and you know that like like work becomes their life and while i never saw that directly i definitely got a got the sense of it as well i remember one of my colleagues uh he would spend all his time at work he was a compositor and like compositing even in, in the west in the effects is like it's mental you know those are the people that have the most over time of them all because like they're in the end of the pipeline they yeah everyone else like we all take up bidding days from comp essentially anyway he was working in comp and <laughs> this is one day i come in and it's like just before lunch or something and i just hear like a giant thump just look over and he just like hit his head in the keyboard he was so tired he fell asleep at work and it wasn't uncommon for him to go take a nap or something. I was quite worried about it in the beginning. And people told me that, you know, it's just, he just works a lot. And I was like, geez, that's crazy. Another big difference, if you compare it to like Western animation jobs, I would say is the, it's quite hard to formulate it. Uh, I don't want to sound like a dick, but it's the, Sort of independent creative thinking i don't know like how else to express it in the west i feel like me i think it's more of just a societal thing really that there's play there's so much emphasis placed on the individual in the west which can be both good and bad whereas in japan there's a much more emphasis like the emphasis is much more on you know the community as a whole not you as the individual what you want, your needs, that kind of stuff. So, and I think that translated to to work as well. Obviously, I can't speak for other industries there, but you got the sense of you get a job, and that's your job. Like, like room for interpretation is is more restricted, I would say, which in a way makes it. Well, it's not easier, it's just different because it takes part of part of the problem solving out of the solution and you get to focus on just your task. The amount of times, like in, in the effects in the West, jobs, freelance, whatever it's been that I've worked there, the emphasis that's been put on, like, not you as an individual, but you, your ability to problem solve, your ability to come up with different ideas, improve upon the, 
the design, the concept, whatever it is. Maybe not if you're a concept artist. Um, that can be different, obviously. But I feel like that's one of the big differences between Japan and the West there. Now, with that being said, actually, I wanted to return real quick to, to the overtime thing because I think that's where something else arises that I don't really see that much in the West except for people who are really tight at work and it's one of the upsides I think of doing downtime or just doing overtime and working so much in a company is that you form really close relationships with the people at work because they become kind of like your secondary family because you spend so much time with them and even after work maybe the boss has gone home it's just the artist in the office people are more likely to fuck around and just make jokes and do stuff they wouldn't do when the boss is there and that's the kind of thing I feel like at least for me created a lot of community and it's also one of the reasons why now here coming back to Fukuoka like six or seven years later I still have a network of people that I talk to that I meet up with and I didn't get that strong of a sense of camaraderie community in the West to the same degree which is which is very interesting and and this is something that I've heard repeated multiple times across different industries within work in Japan is that your work family kind of becomes your second family because I mean if you are kind of expected to work overtime let's say you work 10 hours a day probably pretty realistic that's a lot of time you spend with your colleagues obviously you're focused you're engaged in work a lot of the time but you go for lunch you very often go out drinking afterwards during the weekday it's not just reserved for for Friday multiple times a week you go out to eat with your boss this happens a lot and that's I never experienced that. I mean, sure, like if you live in London and you work in the effects, you go to the pub once in a while, but not to the same extent as they sort of socialize here. And obviously you shouldn't have to work 50% overtime, 20, 30% overtime every day just to socialize with your colleagues, but overtime does create that kind of camaraderie, but I will never be one to like sort of vote for overtime it's i don't believe in it i don't think it's necessary it's down to bad planning and terrible bidding basically it's and it's the artists that often get punished for it unless people sort of like band together and actually say no which doesn't happen that often but then of course there's also the subject of money and like i'm just gonna be honest with you like pay in japan is not great it's I didn't think that pay was going to be good when I first started, but in the West, I mean, you can make a lot of money. And whether you work in games or animation, film, whatever, as you work your way up the ranks, there's definitely really good money to be made. Um, you don't even have to be like a supervisor or a lead or anything. Like as a mid to senior artist, there's still really good money to be made. Uh, the baseline here in Japan is substantially lower and I had a friend of mine she was working as an animator in Tokyo and <laughs> she was Japanese and I mean she lived in Tokyo and <laughs> she had four hours of commuting every day two hours each way uh, it was too expensive for her to live closer uh, to Tokyo so that's what she did and and then she would spend you know she had a lot of personal time that she could spend on the train but for me even my like my last job i had before i went full-time with flip normals i think i had like maybe 40 minutes each way and for me that was like you sit with everyone else you have the daily commute no one likes it no one wants to be there and uh, it just made me in a bad mood i feel like most of the time so you know if i can avoid a commute i would definitely avoid a commute now if you were to come to somewhere like fukuoka or a smaller town like around in Japan where rent prices aren't that ridiculous and living expenses aren't that crazy because that's the thing like eating out 
it isn't really that expensive here in Japan. It's, it's pretty cheap. So, you know, that's a way to sort of offset it. But pay is substantially lower here in Japan. Uh, so you just got to be aware of it. Now, another approach that you can take, which is... That approach is somehow living in Japan uh, and not working for a Japanese company. <laughs> That's what I'm currently doing. And the thing is, uh, when you have overseas income, that they tend to pay, like overseas companies tend to pay more. Or they, they do pay more. And if you're working as a freelancer while living in Japan, for example, and you're freelancing for a company in the States, let's say, uh, they're gonna pay you three, four times as much as a Japanese company would have paid you for the equivalent work. Uh, I thought like the mosquitoes were actually gone, but it uh, turns out if you sit in a tiny forest and try to record a video, that's, that's how they come to get you. Back to the subject of money, right. Overseas work is, um, is not a bad idea. Overseas work while you're traveling or overseas work while you're living is not a bad idea. Obviously, sort out your taxes and all of that, but that is, that is another avenue. There's of course the tricky part about coming to Japan and actually working. And like, you can't just bum around and just live in Japan. You gotta have a visa of some sort. And that's where if you come here first, work for a Japanese company, let's say you work here for a few years or something like that. If it's your first job, I don't know, maybe it's, you've worked in the industry for a while and you wanna try something new. Coming here, working for a few years, bringing over, you know, just remembering your network to, and you don't forget all your previous clients. Build up new clients while you're here in Japan. And then maybe after a few years, setting up your own company as a freelance business, for example, that can be an excellent way of going about it. So, you know, there's definitely pros and cons of, I mean, working in any country, in any industry. But I think the most important thing you have to keep in mind is like, if you wanna to come to Japan and work, you want to try and work in animation then you should most definitely do it it's it's an awesome experience and i think it's something that especially if you're in animation uh, there's so much that japan has to offer that you don't really see in the west and there's a lot of cool opportunities so if it is something you're passionate about i would highly recommend that you look into it